Hi, so in this section we're going to cover how to handle files in PARS and specifically how to upload files to your PARS server and how to serve files from your PARS server. So with PARS and all kind of backends and databases, you need to store data, but quite often these days, and probably very often these days, we also need to deal with the issue of files. Perhaps it's something as simple as you need to upload a profile picture for your user, or perhaps it's even more complicated and, and your application is mainly image-based or, or something along those lines, but we need to deal with files. Now, PARS has an API to deal with files. It's called pars.file. So I'm going to show you how to use this API, this pars.file API, to upload files to your PARS server and then to also read files from your PARS server and perhaps display them somewhere. Now again, just like everything else I've been saying in this course, just have a look at the API documentation. Just even just have, just have a scan through it. So just scanning through the pars.file API, so you can see the main function here, the one that creates the pars file, has three parameters, name, data, and type. So name is just the name of the file, okay? And data is the actual data that you wanna store. So you can store data in three different formats or from three different sources, I should say. The first source is an array of bytes. So just the raw, raw data, the binary data which defines that file. You can actually pass in that as the data parameter. The second way you can pass in data is with something called a base64 encoded string. So if you're working perhaps with um, iOS or Android or some other device, the camera function on there might return you data in something called a base64 encoded string, which is just a way of encoding a binary data in a string. If you've got this format for your file, then again, you can just pass in an object with the key base64 and the value of your base64 encoded string, and the parse file will then create a file based off of that uh, base64 uh, data. And the third method, which is the method I'm gonna show you uh, in this lecture, is how to use a file object selected with a file upload control. So just a normal HTML file upload control. That's by far the most common method if you're building, uh, let's say, a web application. And the final property, the final parameter, is uh, something called type, which is a string. It's something called a content type header. So it really tells PARS, well, what kind of file is this? You know, if it's an image file, that content type header will be sent back when someone requests that file. And the browser, for instance, if it detects that it's an image, will then show the file instead of you know, perhaps downloading it to the person's computer instead. But really, you know, that's an optional parameter. If PARS can guess from the name of the or name of your file what kind of file it is, it will just figure out the content type header all by itself. So perhaps if the name of your file is asim.png, PARS knows that .png means an image file and therefore it will send a content type header of, uh, of image. But if you know that the name isn't gonna have an extension which is gonna be useful for PARS, then you can pass in a content type header as the final parameter. Okay, so I've talked enough about the API. Let's actually start writing some code. So I've got, I've created a JS bin. So this JS bin is a little bit different to our other ones. We still have our PARS client library there. I've additionally added the jQuery library here just to make it easier to handle uh, some of the uh, HTML elements that we're going to be dealing with as well. And I've also, for the first time, added in some HTML elements. So we've got an image tag with an ID of image L. I've got a file input control with an ID of input L. And I've got a button with an ID of button L. Now with JS bin, when you want to actually see what the HTML would look like, you, you look at the output tab and you can see now in the output tab, we have a choose file button, which is the actual uh, import control here. And we have the load button, which is the button defined here. And we have an image tag, but the image tag is actually empty. It's not, it's because, because there's no source, it's not showing up on the screen right now. Okay, so that's the HTML. Let's look at the JavaScript. Okay, so I've bootstrapped, again, I've bootstrapped the JavaScript a little bit. So we've got our standard pars at the top. We've got our test object class here. We've got line six, which is a uh, way of working with jQuery. When jQuery has been loaded on the page, it will call this function here. Let's just say this function here. And then it'll print out jQuery loaded. And then 
The button at L, if you remember, is this load button on the right hand side. If that has been clicked on, then it will call this function here. And in this function, we just have some code which basically loads up the file upload control, which is again this choose file um, control on the top right here. And if it detects that it has actually some files selected, it will then grab a reference to the file object itself. And from that file object, it will get the name of the file. So the file and the name. And for now, we're just console logging that to the screen. So this is just some bootstrap code. We haven't actually done any stuff with parse files so far in this code. This is just to, to, to get us started so we can start working with parse files. So now um, I also want to open up the console. Let's get some space on the right side and here as well. Okay, let me uh, run with JS at the top and here we go. So now jQuery has loaded. So this, this line seven, it gets printed out. I'm gonna choose a file. So I'm gonna choose high two. And then I'm gonna click load. Okay. So you can see line 10, that console log was printed out because we detected a click on the button. And then we loaded up information about the file. And then on line 17, we printed our file uploaded and then the, the name of the file .gif. So now we can see that this code on the screen is working. Let's actually start saving. Let's actually save this file to our parse server. So to do that, we create a file object. So let's call it parse file is equal to new parse.file. And if you remember from the API, the first parameter is the name of the file. And the second parameter, well, we, we want to actually pass it the, uh, the a reference to the file itself. But again, if you wanted to, you could pass in a byte array or a base64 uh, object. Okay, so now, now we've created the parse file. We can treat it like any other object in parse. We want to save it. So we parse file.save and again this returns a promise which we can hook into with then and what I want to do is I actually want to log out the URL of the file once it's been saved on the parse server so this is the publicly accessible URL this will only be valid this will only be present once the parse file has actually saved on the parse server so let's have a look and see what happens when we run this. In fact, let me refresh the page. We run with JS, choose a file. Let's choose this one. I'm gonna hit load. Let's wait a second. And there you go. Now you can see it's printed out a URL, which we can then copy. Ooh, let me try and copy that. Let me get some space here. Okay, and now let me show you in the browser what that looks like. So you can see it's basically our parse server is there, slash files, slash the app ID, slash some unique identifier that parse has created, underscore, and then the name of the file. So now if I just view that, there you go. There's our GIF which I have uploaded to our PARS server. To make this a bit more fun, what I can do is, um, if you remember, there was an image tag present in the HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set the source of the image tag to the URL that was provided by um, PARS when we saved it. So I'm gonna use just some jQuery to set that. Let's refresh the page. Let me run with JS. Load the file. Okay. And then it now prints it to our, well, to our output tab there. Just a little bit of fun. 
Okay, so now we've saved our file to our parse server. How do we actually associate this file to an object, to an object in our parse database? Well, we can just save it, treat it just like any other attribute. So let's, let me show you with just creating a test object and setting this file on the test object. So let's do var test object, it's a new test object test object or set you can give it whatever, whatever field name that you want and just pass in the parse file instance and just like everything else just hit save and then let's just print out the ID of test object .id. Okay, that looks good to me. Hit refresh. Run with JS, choose file. Hit load. Okay, so now it's created a test object with the ID 8NV. Let's have a look for that in our parse dashboard. Let's refresh. And there you go, 8NV at the top. So if you scroll right, if you look at the parse dashboard, you can now also see that we have a column called funny, which is of type file. And inside here, we can actually click through and actually get, um, well, we can see the, uh, the GIF file that we've uploaded. So just like any other column or any other field, you can actually associate a file with any other uh, object in parse just by setting it, just by setting it, just, just the same way as you would set a string. And again, in the parse dashboard, because it knows this is of type file, if you double click any other field, you can upload a file directly from the parse dashboard and uh, save it uh, save it there. So that's how you associate files with objects with uh, other classes in parse. The only key thing to remember is that the parse file has to be saved first before you can associate it with another object. Okay, thanks.